rises from the ashes. And I didn't realize until after I'd titled the piece that probably the fact that I'm reading the Harry Potter books with my daughter right now might have played into that, just the thinking of it. But it, so the piece is about a metaphorical and emotional death and resurrection. So the, the first half of it is just giving up. And everything in the first half of it is falling, you know? The first gesture. Every bar, every iteration of it is lower and softer. Until, you know. So that whole first ten bars is. Ah, and then we breathe and do it again. Ah, so in these gestures that we're talking about, there's a sense of decay and, and release, giving up. There's. It's the end of struggling against what's hard. It's the end of struggling like against. After we've given up and we've just relaxed, we have sunk to the bottom and, and there's tenderness in it. And from that comes the first attempt at resurrection. And there's starting to be some momentum and you have that line that sort of soars up and then eventually you get this attempt at at momentum. And after all that, we're back where we started. Falling again. Falling like Dali, you know, that painting of the clocks <laughs> right, dripping clocks. on everything. It's just, everything is down until you, and then we get the tender stuff again, you know. Just so gentle. And then of course, we're on this low C. And then eventually you bottom out. And from this, we start to rise. There's starting to be the, the sense of resurrection. We have died the death. And now it's... And this stuff is triumph over that. It's living again. And it's... It could be fall into winter, into spring. It's got that to it. It's got that emotional quality to it. Going through a difficult passage from which you don't know how the escape is going to come, and yet it comes. Okay. So that's what it's about. Why then, if I could ask yeah, you, yeah. is there a, a key change in the middle of the second section? I mean, that isn't so much for programmatic reasons as just for compositional reasons. We've had enough of the pitch class set of E minor. Right. We need some other pitches. Um, but, you know, up, up a half step. More intensity, more excitement, okay. and it makes good on the high C of the bassoon. Yes, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Any um, was there any reference at all to Stravinsky, Firebird, anything like that? I didn't think of it. It's funny that you mentioned it. I'm not even sure I thought that. Except I can't write for the bassoon without thinking about Stravinsky. No one can. Right. right, and I mean, you know, this is kind of the same pitch as this. It's that same world. So, there's a ghost there. But I wasn't thinking actually about Firebird. I think Stravinsky influences me in, in, in passages like, you know, stuff like that, the jaggedness of it. I'm really enjoying being a professional musician. It's a very different thing and there's a lot less um, stuff in the way of the music. But education is always hugely important to me. Passing to Master Chorale is um, starting a lot of educational initiatives, and I hope that education becomes a big part of what we do. We're going to have a high school choral competition next year. We're going to go into schools and you know send our section leaders into schools to work with choirs and do all the stuff that I. You know, you can do things like that from any institution. Was it fun being at UCLA? Was that a good experience for you? It was. I loved it. I loved it. I really learned how to be a composer there, from David Lefkowitz. Right, right. I mean, um, nice. it's, it's just a surprise. I read your, your CV and it's Harvard, Yale, UCLA. Well, you know why? I, mean, I thought at the time that I invented the idea of coming to LA to have freedom as a composer. <laughs> but people have been doing this for a long oh, yeah. time. And composers, specifically on this issue, have always looked to California as a place where there aren't these strictures. You know, on the East Coast, when Milton Babbitt was in the middle of writing all of his crap in the 60s, what was going on in California? Terry Riley, Harry Parch, Lou Harrison, all these guys writing tonal, modal, sweet-sounding music. And that's what I want to write. So 
Not that to mention the Beatles came around the same time. And the Beatles, yeah. Thank you.